Another year, another Citizen Con, and this time, as with every other year, they revealed much new content. Now, a lot of this is coming in the relative short term, other stuff is pointed towards the later parts of next year, so some of this we may not see for quite a while. Yet, all of it was a pretty spectacular demonstration of where CIG would ultimately like Star Citizen to go. Now, throughout the whole day, there was a load of content shown, a load of panels, and a lot of different discussions on the game. However, for this video, I'm going to focus on the content that was revealed in the final panel of the day, the final keynote that is, given by Chris Roberts. So, at the start of the keynote, he gave a quick rundown of the roadmap of what to expect over the next year. Right up front was a mention of OCS, or Object Container Streaming, I think that's server-side, which is pretty significant. A lot of people have been waiting for this for a very long time. Essentially, it will allow the game to stream in content and stream out content as and when needed. It will basically make the game far more stable and much better optimised. Next up was Persistence. This is the player persistence. It means that what you achieve in the game will actually be staying with you and will no longer be wiped as the game upgrades and updates. Meanwhile, mid-2020 will bring a full universe persistence, and this not just affects the players, but also affects all items within the game. Essentially then, the game will keep track of every single object. If you go into one location and pick up a book or a spanner or, as Chris Roberts suggested, a coffee mug, and then fly out to another planet and leave it there somewhere in the middle of the forest, yeah, that's where it would remain for an indeterminate amount of time until maybe another player actually locates it. And this will be the same for every single object in the game. There will be object persistence. And Chris Roberts was pretty keen and pretty certain that this would ultimately lead to a lot of dynamic gameplay as her players begin to use the Star Citizen universe as a giant sandbox. Server meshing was also mentioned. This is a pretty important update as it will allow the game to spin up new servers as and when required. However, this isn't coming anytime soon. Chris Roberts specifically stated that it's unlikely to happen in 2020, but may happen in 2021. They are, however, working on the networking for server meshing right now. Salvaging, more missions, more game loops, and even a bigger universe were also mentioned, but no time frame was placed upon those, though it seemed as though it would likely be towards the later half of 2020. At this point, they got on with the demo and revealed what was coming to the future of the game. This began with the player walking along the new planetary surface of Microtech. This is a frozen atmospheric planet. It's very beautiful and very stunning but completely covered in snow, and began the reveal of the dynamic weather system. In this case, it was an incoming snowstorm. The weather on the planet, of course, was already cold, but the dynamic weather system would include features such as wind levels, humidity, heat, cold, as well as eventually volumetric crowd, uh, clouds and fog. So um, the weather does affect players, both in the terms of how they're animated, how they can interact with the world. For here, you can see that uh, as the wind picks up, the player's putting their hands in front of their face. But there's also status elements or status elements that affect the player. So that as the temperatures begin to plunge, this will cause the player to shiver and eventually go into hypothermia and I guess eventually die. Now, this can be dealt with by ensuring you dress in the right types of clothes or even the right types of spacesuits. And yeah, you won't freeze if you're uh, dressed as you should be. Now, as far as I understood it, I may have got the point wrong here, so do correct me if I'm wrong. I'll pin a comment if necessary. But I do believe that the first stages of dynamic weather are coming in patch 3.8, which is due this year. That's also coming with the new planet, Microtech. Now, the point of the demo was to show off a mission. Basically, the player snuck into a base. They stole a data node and then needed to sneak out the base. Here they demonstrated so-called blending in, which I guess is just code words for NPCs not actually reacting. And later, they demonstrated a non-lethal takedown, which seemed a bit over the top. But uh, nonetheless, I think the point here is that stealth missions are going to be a thing. Eventually, the player got outside the base, where you could see the aforementioned dynamic of weather affecting them. The temperature here was apparently as low as minus 128 degrees C, although I don't know how the player lasted as long as they did. But nonetheless, you could see that hypothermia was starting to set in, especially when they got into the cave and found their suit of armour and outfitted that. 
Now you can see here how weather actually affects things within the game, in this case the glass, which is starting to frost up due to the temperature difference inside the suit versus that outside the suit. Eventually the player navigated to a vehicle and you can see the weather affecting the tarp here which the player could interact with and pull off. Uh, the tarp didn't fly away or get blown away but it's still a pretty nice effect nonetheless. Eventually after driving away a bit the player managed to drive into the new ship called the Carrick at which point they needed to escape under fire. Some hostiles were sent off to them apparently I guess from the base. So this really demonstrated the new ship, the Carrick, also showed a little bit of atmospheric combat using the turret at the rear of the ship, which one player was controlling while another player was actually flying the ship. Eventually then, the players did manage to escape. They got up into space, all seamless, flew across the star system, and at this point demonstrated the new volumetric cloud tech. And this was in the form of space clouds. I don't know whether they're actually Lagrange clouds, but they look very much like that. And you can see the graphical effects right here. These, I feel, are absolutely stunning and are going to be an absolute pleasure to fly through. Now, apparently, this same technology is going to be used on planets, both for the cloud systems as well as fog effects. And right here up front, you can see the first jump gate within the Star Citizen game. This takes players to the next star system, which in this case is called Pyro and is a lawless system. Now the Pyro system is scheduled for next year, so it's not something we're going to see immediately, but nonetheless we can see that CIG are working on this. The Stargates themselves work largely as you would expect, they're connected in between by a wormhole. Now inside the wormhole there's a very nice graphical effect, but this isn't where players will remain idle. Players will actually have to play and control the ship at this particular time in order to achieve a successful transition to the other star system. A flight through the tunnel here, if a player hits the walls or passes through the walls, they will be left in space, lost in the middle of nowhere, or otherwise take in huge amounts of damage to the ship. So players will have to navigate through here. Now this did take a while on the live stream, it took about a minute and a half to actually get through the tunnel. I guess eventually this will actually uh, be reduced down, at least I would hope so, I'd like to see it a little bit shorter, maybe 30 seconds or so, but either way it's a nice feat. So whilst players are travelling through this tunnel, uh, the current system they were in, or the previous system they've just left, is streamed out of the game's memory and the new system is loaded in. And here we get the first glance of that new star system, which again is Pyro. It seems likely then that these jump gates will be choke points for the game, although Chris Roberts did say that they will be put in star bases around some of these uh, jump gates, particularly in the law systems or the law abiding systems. I guess it will be a little bit different in lawless systems, but basically they'll become hubs of activity where players will perhaps congregate and maybe NPCs as well. And talking of NPCs, this was also uh, talked about in a previous uh, keynote where CIG discussed an entire uh, background simulation to the game, which will involve persistent NPCs. It showed some very impressive uh, concepts, so yeah, that's something I'll be talking about in another video, so do keep an eye out for that very, very soon. For now though, that was the entirety of the demo for this particular keynote, and it did show a very complete game loop. And I've got to say, it did give the impression at least that things are slowly starting to come together. Looking forward then to seeing patch 3.8, and eventually 3.9. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.